So about a week ago, my carrier was having a discount on the Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge, uh, since the Galaxy S8 is coming out very soon here. And uh, I decided it was a good opportunity for me to try out Android. Now, this isn't the first time I've done it. Uh, about six or seven months ago, I did have a Galaxy S7, the regular version, but I didn't really use it as my main device. I just tested out the features and the camera, but I didn't really use it as my daily driver. But this time around, I got uh, S7 Edge and I really wanted to try uh, to transfer from iPhone to Android and actually use this phone full time and see if I could do it. So here are the steps that I had to do uh, to make this Android phone work as my daily driver. So the first thing is my music. I'm an Apple Music subscriber. I like all the exclusives that they have. I like uh, all the artists that they have signed exclusively. I like the design of the application, etc. I've tried out Spotify. I just don't like it. So Apple Music is a must for me. And luckily, Apple does have uh, an Apple Music app in the Play Store. So they just updated it with this new iOS 10 design. And I'm really glad they did because the application before on Android just looked so un, un Apple like it looked like it was a beta build of the application. It was so glitchy. It was so laggy. This new application, it still has some glitches, uh, but it is pretty smooth for the most part. I like this new now playing stream with those uh, animations like you have on the iPhone. And of course, you do have uh, lyric options uh, like you do have in iOS 10. So this app has been refined. Uh, beyond belief before it was so bad but now it's actually usable on an Android phone so Apple Music done check off now we can move on to notes so before uh, I was using the stock notes app on my iPhone and this is the only thing that I had to change so I couldn't really find a way to access any of my notes on an Android phone so I had to switch to a whole different service and luckily I think I found something that's actually a bit better it's called simple note it's right here just scan your finger and here are all your notes. I'm not gonna open any of them because it's kind of personal stuff, but uh, pretty much it works pretty much as a cloud internet-based note service. Very simple. It's not as advanced as the Notes app on iOS. You can't add images. I don't even think you can bold or italicize text in this application, but it's very simple and it gets the job done uh, for what I use in Notes. So next up is Photos. Now I used to be a user of iCloud Photo Library until I decided that Google Photos was a much better service. I actually switched to Google Photos before I switched over to an Android device, so keep that in mind. And uh, luckily, Google Photos is just a simple app that uh, if you have it on iPhone and then you download it on Android, it's very simple. All the photos that uh, were in the app on your iPhone are on the app uh, on Android. It's a very simple app. All you have to do is upload your photos to the cloud, uh, unlimited, it's free, and uh, all your photos are here, and it's pretty much the same app uh, as it is on iPhone on Android. So pretty much no changes there and I'm able to use my photos and store my photos as I was uh, able to before. So another pretty important aspect with the iPhone was HomeKit and being able to walk into my room and for example change the color of my desk backlighting or turn off the lights in my room that was pretty important to me. I was able to say hey Siri turn the desk dark orange and uh, it would turn the desk dark orange like you saw right there, my iPhone is sitting on my desk right here. And uh, as far as I was able to tell at the time, the Galaxy S7 Edge, uh, even though it was running Nougat, Android 7.0, there wasn't a way to get uh, any HomeKit similar service where you can just use your voice to change the color of your lights or your uh, smart home accessories. Well, I found a YouTube video that was able to um, get the Google Assistant that's usually only available on Pixel devices uh, pretty much on any device that has Nougat. So now, if I press and hold my home button, I can say, change the desk to dark blue. Sure, changing the desk to dark blue. And you can see it's a different voice. It's not as quick as Siri and HomeKit, and you can't really say, uh, okay, Google, when the, uh, when the device is locked. You can see it activated there when the phone is on, but there are some flaws, like, for example, you can't activate it uh, when the screen is off. So I can't really uh, do it unless the phone is on, but I still have that functionality to change uh, my smart home enabled devices, which is really cool. So those four things that I just went through are pretty much the must haves on an Android phone for me to be able to switch back and forth from iPhone to Android. Now keep this in mind that I did have to turn off iMessage on my iPhone because if I didn't, it would be a mess. People would keep trying to text my iPhone through iMessage and I wouldn't be getting those messages. So I had to turn iMessage completely off. 
So that is kind of a downgrade there. But luckily, I do have unlimited picture and video messages through my carrier. So uh, I don't lose any of that functionality. But stuff like uh, read receipts and telling you if your message has been delivered, uh, that is kind of convenient. And unfortunately, I do lose that functionality. Uh, a couple things, uh, a couple side things that I do like about this uh, Android phone and Android phones in general uh, is an app switcher and it's something that Apple doesn't have. So do you ever download an application and you know you're going to use it eventually, but on your iPhone you don't want it taking up space on your home screen because you know you're not going to use it at that time? Well, uh, that's where Android is actually better because you can store all your apps in your app drawer, but the apps that you use every day you can have on your home screens but every app, apps that you might not use every day, you can store in your app drawer. So it's a, it's a different way that Android does it. I can respect it, but uh, I'm able to use how it is on iPhone and Android, and it's not that big of a deal for me on iPhone. Uh, another cool thing is you're able to uh, quick launch the camera from the home screen on Android just by double clicking the home button and it opens up the camera. So there is a way to do this on iPhone on the lock screen, but if you double click, on the home screen it'll obviously open up multitasking uh, but on this device uh, double clicking is for the camera and there is a separate multitasking uh, button on the bottom left so a couple things that I do like about Android uh, a couple quirks I do also like about iOS for example like I said uh, iMessaging and just that continuity between uh, your different iCloud devices so there you go guys those are pretty much all my thoughts uh, when I switched from iPhone to Android it was kind of a tedious process when turning off iMessage and switching to a different notes application, but it's not that bad. And honestly, if you want to have two phones, an Android phone and an iPhone, it's the best of both worlds. And it's not that many uh, shortcomings if you want to switch between the two platforms. So tell me in the comments below if you want to see more Android based videos. If you guys like hearing my thoughts on Android phones, uh, maybe I could uh, show you some cool tricks on my Samsung phone here as well as iPhone videos. So tell me in the comments below below that like button uh, Drop a like on this video. Let's see if we can hit maybe 20 likes. My name is Mike, and I'll see you in the next one